is in a tough spot right now, with the geopolitical tensions between nations still on the rise. In situations like this, it is important to be prepared for both combat and defense. To remain at the forefront of technological advancement and improve its defense system, the United States is giving a major upgrade to the A-10 Thunderbolt, a formidable fighter jet that has been unbeatable for almost 15 years. What are the new upgrades? How has this fighter jet remained irreplaceable for almost 50 years? Join us as we explore the new upgrades of the Black Snake Super A-10 Warthog that has shocked the world. After World War II, the United States did not develop many new fighter jets that make use of conventional weapons. Instead, they focused on making fast planes for carrying nuclear weapons, like the McDonnell F-101 Voodoo. The United States' main fighter jet was the Douglas A-1 from the Korean War when they got involved in the Vietnam War. Even though it was good for its time with a big payload and long flying time, it was slow and not well protected against ground attacks. The U.S. Air Force and Navy lost 266 A-1s in Vietnam, mostly due to small arms fire. Also, it didn't have enough firepower. Because there wasn't a modern attack plane, people asked for one, and in 1961, the Secretary of Defense told the Air Force to create two fighter jets, one for long-range strikes and one for fighter-bomber missions. The long-range one became the General Dynamics F-111 Aardvark, and the fighter-bomber was a version of the U.S. Navy's McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II. The Phantom was successful, but had issues like a short flying time and high costs. To find a cheaper option, the Air Force looked at the Northrop F-5, but later chose the A-7D variant of the LTV A-7 Corsair II. However, the A-7D became more expensive with requests for better engines and new equipment. In 1966, the United States Air Force ordered the development of a specialized close air support aircraft, leading to the AX program. By 1970, due to increased threats, the aircraft's specifications included a focus on a 30mm rotary cannon and a unit cost of $1.4 million. Northrop and Fairchild Republic were chosen to build prototypes, and this birthed the A-10, also called Warthogs or Hog. Following trials and a fly-off against the A-9, the A-10 was selected for production in 1973. The first production flew in 1975, with delivery starting in 1976. Experimental two-seat versions were explored, including a night adverse weather variant, but they were not pursued extensively. On February 10, 1976, Deputy Secretary of Defense Bill Clements allowed the production of these fighter jet at a high rate, and the first A-10 was accepted by the USAF Tactical Air Command on March 30, 1976. They kept making a lot, reaching up to 13 aircraft per month, and by 1984, they had delivered 715 A-10. It was initially thought that the A-10 would last for 6,000 hours. But during testing, they found some problems, so they made small changes to make it stronger. At that time, fighter jets always lasted 8,000 hours. They kept testing the A-10, and they found cracks at a part called Wing Station 23. They fixed it by making changes. Later, they realized that the A-10s in real life were going through more stress than they thought. So they had to change how they test it to make sure it could handle the rough conditions. Its main job is to help by attacking enemy armored vehicles, tanks, and other ground forces. It is the only fighter jet that was developed specifically for this purpose in the United States Air Force. It can also guide other planes to attack ground targets, a job known as Forward Air Controller Airborne. The A-10 is better than the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider in terms of performance and firepower. It was built with a strong frame centered around the powerful 30mm GAU-8 Avenger rotary autocannon. The frame is tough, with features like 1,200 pounds of titanium armor to safeguard the cockpit and plane systems, allowing it to endure damage and keep flying. Its ability to take off and land on short or unpaved runways lets it operate from airstrips near the front lines. 
This formidable fighter jet was involved in the Gulf War, which was when many countries, led by the United States, stepped in to stop Iraq from taking over Kuwait. The plane did a great job in that war. It was also used in other fights like in Grenada, the Balkans, Afghanistan, the Iraq War, and against the Islamic State in the Middle East. The A-10 has wide wings that protrude on their own, and they are positioned low on the plane. These wings, combined with other features, make the A-10 really good at flying well at low speeds and heights. The design also lets it take off and land on short runways, so it can work from airfields close to where the action is happening. This jet can stay in the air for a long time and operate even when the weather is not great. It usually flies at a slower speed than some other planes, making it better for attacking ground targets that are small and slow. The front part of the wing is made with a strong yet lightweight honeycomb structure. This construction is also used for parts like flap shrouds, elevators, rudders, and sections of the fins. The skin panels, which cover these parts, are connected to the stringers and are made using computer-controlled machines, making it faster and cheaper to produce. In battles, this type of panel has proven to be more resistant to damage. Even if parts of the skin get damaged, they can be easily replaced in the field using makeshift materials if needed. The ailerons, which help with rolling, are located at the far ends of the wings and have unique features for better control, especially at slow speeds. They are larger than usual, almost half the wingspan, and are split, making them decelerons. The A-10 was developed in such a way that it can get fuel, get new weapons, and get fixed easily without using technical tools. Its simple design means it can be taken care of at bases with limited resources. An interesting thing is that many parts of the plane can be switched between the left and right sides, like the engines, main landing gear, and vertical stabilizers. The tough landing gear, special tires, and big straight wings let it fly from short and rough places, even when it's carrying a lot of heavy weapons. This allows the plane to work from damaged air bases, use taxiways and runways, or even land on straight parts of roads. The front wheels of the A-10 are not in the middle, they're a bit to the right. This is done so that the big 30 milliliters cannon in the middle can fit properly. When this jet is moving on the ground, it turns differently to the right and left. Turning right takes less space. The back wheels stick out a bit when they are pulled up, which makes it easier to control and less harmful if the plane has to land without the landing gear. All the landing gear folds forward. If there's no power, a mix of gravity and air resistance can make the gear come down and lock in place. This fighter jet's main built-in weapon is a powerful cannon called the GAU-8A Avenger. It's one of the strongest cannons ever on an aircraft. This cannon is designed to shoot at tanks and has a high rate of fire. Originally, the pilot could choose to shoot either 2,100 or 4,200 armor-piercing shells per minute, but they later set it to a fixed rate of 3,900 rounds per minute. The cannon takes about half a second to spin up and can shoot 50 rounds in the first second and then 65 or 70 rounds per second. It is accurate enough to hit 80% of its shots within a 40-foot circle from 4,000 feet in the air. The cannon is made to work best when the A-10 is at a 30-degree dive from 4,000 feet away. The A-10 often has the AGM-65 Maverick missile. This missile can be guided by looking at targets through a camera or using infrared systems. The Maverick can hit things that are farther away than the plane's cannon, making it safer from anti-aircraft systems. During Desert Storm, when there were no special cameras for seeing at night, the Maverick's infrared camera is used for night missions. Other weapons that this fighter jet can carry includes the cluster bombs, Hydra-70 rocket pods, laser-guided bombs like the GBU-39 small diameter bomb, paveway bombs, joint direct attack munitions, wind corrected munitions dispenser, and AGM-152 joint standoff weapon glide bombs. The A-10 usually has an ALQ-131 electronic countermeasures pod under one wing and two AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles for self-defense under the other wing. This jet is extremely tough in battles. It can take direct hits from really strong bullets and explosives, 
up to 23 millimeters. It has two sets of hydraulic systems for flying, and if they don't work or get faulty, there's a backup manual system. If it has to fly without hydraulic power, there's a manual control system. The plane can still be controlled well enough to go back home, even though it's harder for the pilot. It's made to be able to fly with just one engine, half of the tail, one elevator, and half of a wing missing. Since the A-10 is often close to where the enemy is, it's an easy target for things like portable air defense systems, surface-to-air missiles, and enemy planes. That's why it carries flares and chaff cartridges to avoid getting hit. The cockpit and some flight control parts have really strong armor made of 1,200 pounds of titanium. It's called a bathtub. This armor has been tested and can take hits from 23 millimeter cannon fire and even some hits from 57 millimeter shell pieces. It's made of titanium plates with different thicknesses depending on where the likely hits might come from. The armor is almost 6% of the fighter jet's weight when it's empty. Any inside part of the tub that the pilot might see is covered by a shield made of layers of strong nylon to protect from shell pieces. The front glass and cover can resist small arms fire. This armor showed how strong it is when, on April 7, 2003, when Captain Kim Campbell flew over Baghdad during the invasion of Iraq. Her jet got hit a lot by flak, which damaged one engine and the hydraulic system. She had to fly with manual controls, but she still flew for almost an hour and landed safely. The A-10 was made to fly from air bases close to the action and runways that might not be perfect. The way the engines are placed, using the General Electric TF-34 GE-100 turbofan engines, reduces the risk of stuff getting sucked into them. It also lets the engines run while the plane is getting ready for the next mission, making it faster. The wings are set lower, which makes it easier for ground crews to work on the plane. To hold up the heavy engines, there are four strong bolts connecting them to the aircraft. The engines are designed to have a low chance of being seen by heat-seeking missiles because they release their exhaust over the tailplanes. To make sure the fuel system stays safe, the A-10 puts all four fuel tanks in the middle of the aircraft and keeps them separate from the main body. This means anything trying to damage the fuel tanks would have to get through the aircraft's skin first. If a fuel tank is damaged, it can seal itself to stop leaks. Check valves also stop fuel from flowing into a damaged tank. Most of the fuel system is inside the tanks, so if a part breaks, it won't cause a fuel loss. After refueling, the system is cleaned out. The fuel tanks have foam inside to catch debris and prevent spills if there's damage. The engines are kept separate from the rest of the aircraft by firewalls and fire extinguishers. If all four main tanks are lost, there are two backup tanks that can fly the aircraft for 230 miles. The U.S. Army has 281 A-10 Warthogs, and they're pretty old, about 41 years on average. Boeing got a contract to make new wings for all of them. This will let them keep flying until the mid-2030s, with the new wings lasting for an extra 10,000 hours of flight. A-10 mechanics are putting on these new wings in Utah and South Korea. The planes are also getting new bombs, the GBU-39, and can carry up to 18 of them. The A-10 is getting other improvements too, like a better system to find and identify ground targets and upgrades to communication systems. However, these changes might not help much against modern air defenses as seen in the war between Russia and Ukraine. During a comparison between the Warthog and the F-35, the F-35 was put to the test to see if it could handle a crucial role of directly supporting friendly ground forces by attacking enemy ground forces. The results of this assessment were kept secret for five years, and now we understand why the F-30 didn't perform as well as the A-10, which is specifically designed for this task. The A-10 excels at rushing into battle, tearing apart enemy forces threatening friendly troops, and being less vulnerable to threats like the Stinger missile. While the F-35 has its strengths, such as its ability to defend against missiles, it struggles against simpler threats like the Soviet ZSU-23-2, which could pose a serious danger. 
More advanced threats like the Soviet OSA are even more problematic for the F-35. Furthermore, the F-35 lacks a powerful seven-barrel cannon that the A-10 possesses, capable of quickly dealing with armored targets. Considering the financial aspect, the cost of operating an F-35 is about $44,000 per hour, significantly more than the $119,000 to $120,000 per hour for an A-10. Recognizing the importance and cost-effectiveness of the fighter jet, the Senate and Congress decided against phasing it out in favor of the F-35. Instead, they chose to embrace common sense, opting to modernize the legendary A-10 extensively, including the replacement of its wings. The absence of this fighter jet over Gaza can be attributed to the United States' reluctance to involve itself in the Arab-Israeli conflict. Israel lacks A-10 fighter jet and trained pilots for such operations. When it comes to the potential use of A-10s in the Russian-Ukrainian war, the situation is complex. Russia possesses formidable air defense systems like the S-300, S-400, Buck, and Pantsir, making it perilous for the A-10 to approach the front lines directly. However, making use of GBU-39 guided bombs from a safer distance of 60 to 100 kilometers remains a viable option. The strategy involves approaching the attack line covertly, ascending sharply to 5 to 8 kilometers, releasing the bombs, and then safely returning to the airfield without being detected by Russian radar. Regardless, it's clear that the dependable A-10 still has a role to play in the United States military, and prematurely retiring this veteran seems unwarranted. To enhance its concealment during low-altitude subsonic flights, the A-10 employs various aircraft camouflage patterns. These schemes have seen diverse iterations, including the peanut scheme, incorporating sand, yellow, and field drab, black and white hues suitable for winter conditions, and a blended pattern of tan, green, and brown. During the Cold War, the prevalent European One Woodland camouflage combined dark green, medium green, and dark gray to blend seamlessly with typical European forest landscapes. This choice reflected the prioritization of aerial threats over ground fire. However, post the 1991 Gulf War, the focus shifted due to increased concern about ground-based threats, leading to the adoption of the Compass Ghost scheme featuring darker gray on the top and lighter gray on the underside. A notable feature is the false canopy painted in dark gray beneath the aircraft, positioned just behind the gun. This form of automimicry aims to confuse adversaries regarding the aircraft's orientation and maneuver direction. Additionally, many A-10s showcase distinctive nose art, ranging from shark mouths to warthog head motifs. These visual elements contribute to this fighter jet's overall visual strategy for both camouflage and psychological impact. The future of the A-10 is still up for discussion. Back in 2007, the Air Force thought it would keep flying until at least 2028, possibly even longer. They were thinking of replacing it with the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II. However, some people like Winslow Wheeler from the Project on Government Oversight criticized this idea. They believed swapping the A-10 for the F-35 would be a big step backward because the A-10 performs well and the F-35 is expensive. In 2012, the Air Force considered using the F-35B short takeoff and vertical landing variant to replace the A-10 in close air support missions, but they figured out it couldn't do enough missions. By August 2013, both Congress and the Air Force were looking at different options. They thought about using the F-35 or the MQ-9 Reaper drone to do what the A-10 does. Some argue that the A-10's armor and cannon are better for ground attacks than other planes like the F-35. They also say that guided weapons could be easily blocked and ground commanders often ask for A-10 support. Nevertheless, the capabilities of the A-10 is unrivaled and unbeatable. Also, judging by the operational success of this fighter jet, it is obvious that the formidable weapon is here to stay. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.